Awesome. Cool. Well, hi, everyone. Happy New Year. Thank you so much for joining Joyce and I um, today. It's really great to see um, all of you uh, with us. It's making January um, a lot more enjoyable to see you all here and really hope that you're all doing well. Um, so just in case you've met um, one and not the other, um, Joyce is uh, one of our CSMs, so Client Success Manager, um, and she celebrated her anniversary um, with EdUp this week. And uh, I'd say it, it feels like she's very much part of the, the furniture, um, but I guess her... <laughs> <laughs> her, knowledge, her knowledge of the, the platform, her knowledge of, of EDAP really means that she's instrumental in getting our clients um, set up for success uh, with their, their learning programs. So many of you guys will, will know her already. Um, and I'm the uh, client success uh, lead for, for APAC, but I'm very much here to assist only today. This is going to be um, Joyce um, going through a, a really cool live demo on one of our um, newest exciting features that uh, recently came out, our, our PowerPoint converter. Um, just another heads up as well that we've got uh, the rest of the team that's with us in the chat. Um, George that recently joined us, you have Jenny and Lizzie as well. So feel free to, to jot any questions or comments down in the, in the chat or the Q&A um, and either the team will, will get to those questions within the chat or we can answer them um, live at the, at the end. We'll, we'll leave a bit of time for um, some, some questions and answers. So um, today we're going to be um, talking through some of the really exciting um, new features for 2022. Some of these are out now already. Um, some of these are, are much anticipated. I'm sure you've heard of them already. You've been requesting them. Um, and we really think that they're going to be uh, game changing for your, for your programs this year. Um, so we'll cover off um, the newest features that are released um, and a few that are um, coming very soon. Um, so this one starts us off quite nicely because um, it's really an improvement that's been made to the um, very first uh, step in the learner journey. Um, and this is really if you're inviting your learners by invite link, um, by QR code or invite code, um, you can now, as an admin in your um, registration settings, upload a custom background, which obviously gives you further customization. Um, and for your learners means that they have that full branded experience from the get go, from that initial registration um, step and their first point of entry in the app. The next one here, so the, the week before last, this was a release that was made to um, our YouTube and Vimeo video um, templates, um, which means that as authors, you can now disable the skip video button um, on these types of slides. So for those critical videos that require learners to view them from start to finish of the video, um, they can you can now require that that they do so before they progress through the the lesson so you can do this um, when you're adding a, a youtube or vimeo slide within your lesson you can do that by deselecting this button here so the always skip um always show skip button and this was a, a request that we've heard a lot so small win but um should should be um should be quite an improvement there to, to those slides um, next up, so is uh, this is improved analytics performance. We're now happy to say that the data um, on these reports um, refresh um, every, or they, they, they take 30 minutes to refresh, so within that 30 minute um, time frame. And that's on these reports here. So the CCBU, the manager CCBU, and that's course completion by user, um, course summary page, the manager dashboard, as well as the performance dashboard. 
Um, and just a final one before I hand over to Joyce, this is to do with language switching, which is great for multilingual audiences. Um, now your learners can actually um, choose the language that they want to um, view their courses in themselves instead of having to relay or rely, sorry, on their device settings and changing those device settings, they can now go to their my profile in the app, um, go to account settings and select the language that they want to view their courses in. And this is provided, of course, that the course um, you have translated into the language that they want to view it in. So it still would need uh, to be translated in the admin portal. Um, but this should be a really great one if you've got um, if you've got different different learners, um, yeah, that that have the the joy of uh, speaking different languages. Cool. So I'm going to hand over to to Joyce now to walk you through um, the new version of our PowerPoint converter tool. Yeah. Awesome. Can you see my screen? Okay. Yeah. Did you were there slides that we wanted to show quickly, Joyce? Before jumping yeah, in. Or? Absolutely. Um, let me just share my screen. Awesome. Thank you. Cool. So previously we did have a PowerPoint converter and just based on some feedback that we got from you guys, we made some enhancements that I'll show you as I demo through it. But this will really allow you to upload your PowerPoints a lot faster and just reorganize them before you actually start using our authoring tool and adding some interactive slides and making them very ad app and a lot more interactive. So let me just um, start that demo now. Um, so you guys are fairly familiar with the admin portal. If I actually click this convert PPT button at the top here and then click immediate conversion, I can click next. And this is where you would upload your file. I might just drop and drag it into here and let that load. And then I can press submit. And this is where it's quite different. So previously, we would just convert it into a lesson for you and it would all basically be the same scrollable template. So now it's a lot more adaptive and we've given you some suggestions based on the type of slide that we looked at for the PowerPoint slide here. Um, this one might be a better example, actually. So this one, has the original slide that you can see. You can see that's got quite a lot of text. So it's um, suggested a title slide, expandable, a review, um, or a scrollable, and then a simple image one. This one can be for fairly complicated slides where um, it might just have a lot of imagery or something like that. So you can actually take it, just how it works is just takes a screen cap of it and then uploads it as a simple image. Obviously you can see that the PowerPoint itself was formatted a bit funny. So I might go ahead and actually change that to a scrollable one. And then you can work across all of them down here and you might just delete ones as well if you don't think that it's important anymore. Um, further, I can add new lessons and also just um, break them up into different lessons. So we all know that micro learning principles, you want to have digestible ones. Typically, we have seen PowerPoints be super long, like 20 plus slides. You want them to be bite sized. So I might go ahead and then break this up. So I think let's break this up here and then rename the slides. Uh, the lessons rather, and then you can actually go ahead and pick slides that you want to move over to the next lesson. So I might just quickly go ahead and do that. And Bri, if I actually miss any steps, do let me know because we all know. Oh, you're doing amazing so far. What a good author. <laughs> I should quit my job and become an instructional designer. <laughs> <laughs> Um, cool. And then I'll probably move it over to the next slide. Um, and then once you're happy with it, I might just reorder it actually, because it might fit a bit better in terms of the micro learning. And then I can actually just go ahead and edit the content. 
And then this will actually take you through to the very familiar authoring tool that you guys have. Um, and again, you can drag and drop the order of it as you please here. And then this is where you might want to go ahead and um, add a interactive slide or a survey um, as per, again, our micro learning principles. You wanna make it as engaging as possible for your learner. And you also want to potentially collect feedback from your learner on how the lessons are going so that you can improve as a trainer as well. Uh, let's use just a simple multiple choice slide and I can rename it, you know, do you think it's important? And then I can randomize it and I'll select true as the correct answer. And then once you save it, uh, you've got your two lessons in there all organized and uh, you can go ahead and add any additional bells and whistles to it um, and add your learners. But I might go ahead and quickly add a course setting. Um, let's add a logo here and then maybe brand it a tiny bit. Might add a brain and then publish. And also, if you aren't aware already, we do have a um, slight enhancement on the course logos as well. So typically you have to go to the course to upload a logo, but uh, now if you actually want to apply it on the account level, so you don't have to apply the same logo to every course, you can do it within the app settings. So I might quickly actually show you that. You go to app settings, you go to content, and then you can add a default course logo. And then once you upload that, it would apply to all of your courses that don't already have a logo. But if you actually want to override that, you can just go into the core settings as I showed you before, and then that would override that default course logo. Fantastic. As well. Yeah, one of those small wins that is a bit of a, a time saver. Yeah, absolutely. Um, any questions so far that I can see? Um, so far, I think, I think good. we're good. Cool. Um, must be explaining everything very clearly. Yeah, so let's go and actually check out some new features then. Um, cool, so I will share my screen, um, but I think Joyce, you're going to talk through these exciting features that are coming soon. I will indeed. So the first one, can we see her screen again? Sounds good. Uh, the first one is the certificate download. So we've heard a lot of feedback from you guys that you guys want to actually be able to access your learner's uh, certificates. It might be for compliance purposes or to be able to provide it back to auditors and whatnot. So we have listened to you and the first slice will allow admins to download certificates individually for their learners. And then eventually with the follow-up follow iterations, uh, the improvements will include um, things such as search, sorting, and the ability to bulk download those certificates. And with the enhancements that we're making as well, the certificates, they won't consider assignments or enrollment rules. So in other words, only certificates that have been earned um, will show up in the table and they will show up regardless of whether the course or the user has been archived. And that will be due to be released around the end of the month or towards the beginning of next month. And then with the next one uh, for Brain Boost, Previously, we had, we've already made some enhancements actually. So previously, in order to activate the Brain Boost uh, functionality, how it worked was the learner had to answer around 40 interactive slides to um, be able to start utilizing it. We realized that that was quite a lot. And so now it only takes one question to be answered in order, in order to activate the space repetition feature. Um, we do have a release date to have the analytics be uh, fully rolled out around the mid uh, of next month. And um, for the curious as well, 
Uh, we do have some really interesting stats off the back of the app release last year in December. So over 10,000 people began a brain boost session since our enhancement in December. And together they have seen over 300,000 boosted slides, which was really cool. And then of um, that approximately 60% of those have taken more than one session and 20% have taken over six sessions. Um, and I think the last really interesting stat was uh, the majority of the learners actually found Brain Boost via the homepage card as well. Yeah. Um, and then... Okay. Before we move on, we have had a question here, Joyce, um, yes. from Humara around the, um, the new compliance certificates and whether or not um, they'll be downloadable for learners as well as admin. Yes, so they will definitely be downloadable for the learner in a PDF format. It will typically uh, sit just under the course name on that tile that the learner sees. Thank you for that question. Is it me or is it Joyce? Am I back? Yes. Uh, no, it's still me. Um, All right, I think we're back. I think it might have been my internet. Sorry about that, guys. The joys of working from home. Um, sorry, was that question answered? Yeah, it was answered. Perfect. Cool. Um, let's move on to custom fields. So some of you guys utilize custom fields like business names, employee IDs and whatnot. And we have heard lots of requests to be able to include these custom fields in our reporting. So uh, very soon we will have custom fields available in the course completion by user as well as the manager's dashboard. Um, you can either hide custom fields or show them. And then when you export them, the custom fields will show up next to all of your reporting. Um, if you actually want to test it out uh, before it's fully released, you can reach out to your dedicated customer success manager. So either myself or Bryony, and we can provide you guys that link as well. Um, otherwise, the release date should be either the end of this month or the beginning of next month. Awesome. Yeah. And then with slide level analytics, this one's quite exciting for me, actually. So um, slide, a slide level analytics will soon be available um, again around the end of this month or next month, and it will be available in your performance dashboard. So when you kind of click into the course, you can drill down into your course, then you can drill down into your lesson, and then you'll have the slides there. And then you can actually see how the user answered on those specific slides. So uh, if it's an interactive slide, you might be able to see that Devin um, spent 15 seconds on that slide. The first time that they tried to answer it, um, whether they got it correct or not and then if you've actually allowed them to be able to repeat lessons you can also see the latest answer that they uh, answered as well and whether they got it correct or incorrect um, you can also see you'll eventually be able to see how they do on a whole so you can see how the slide is and um, everyone in say a user group how they answered and the percentage of those uh, you, that user group and how they answered as well. We do have the beta link available for you if you want to test it out as well. Um, and just a few caveats that I do want to uh, iterate here. So with the slides, um, there are supported slides, um, which will be the concept slides, the multiple choice slides, the number slides and the relationship slides that we will track. And we will start collecting the data for those slides um, around, I think, the end of December. So if you have completed the lessons kind of before that, um, we wouldn't have collected the data on that. Oh, thank you, Joyce. Yeah, those two are really exciting. And again, if, if you're keen to get your hands on 
those uh, beta testing links for the custom fields and the slide level analytics just give us a shout and um, we'll share those with you obviously we're, we're really keen to hear your feedback before it gets released Awesome. So I guess these next features, um, are last but not least, really, because uh, I'm sure that they're quite high on your um, list of, you know, anticipated features as well. Um, and um, the, the, the background really to these automated compliance features, you know, it's all because, you know, as, a, as an organization, I'd say every organization really needs to ensure that their people have done the required training before um, or for, for their job. Um, and um, we're going to be launching these um, set and, and forget um, compliance features that will help you manage that whole uh, process, really. Um, so first off, our course due dates, which you'll now be able to set up relative to when a learner has enrolled in that course. So, for example, here, um, you know, 30 days from the date that that learner has had access to the course, um, that that course will be will be will be due. And then admins will also be able to um, set expiry dates for courses. So in this example, um, 12 months after that learner has uh, completed the course, that completion will expire um, and then they'll have to uh, do the, the refresher or the recertification we often hear um, and, and that should help with that. Um, I'd say, so one of the questions that we've gotten is um, around archiving and a functionality to help, you know, with archiving and, and expiring a course. So separate to this work that we're doing, we're also going to be extending um, the course statuses that we've got. And it's going to look something like draft, followed by scheduled, published and archive and this is really so that you don't have to draft courses in order to make them disappear for learners and for you guys also as admins you'll still be able to see archived uh, courses in analytics that's something that Joyce made me realize yesterday which is awesome um, so this set of um, enhancements these are going to be uh, released in April um, and with, with these features here, um, Q2 is going to bring um, learner notifications, new learner notifications and reminders. So a notification when they're enrolled in new training material, this is already available. You've got auto notifications that send out to learners um, when they're enrolled in a course and in a new um, lesson. Um, but they'll also get a completion reminder. So three days and then one day before that course due date. They'll also get a reminder that their training uh, is due to expire. And then a notification if you've set up that expiry in the annual refresher, for example, they'll get a, a notification to say that they need to uh, redo uh, that course, retake that course. Um, so that's for learners and then manager notifications. And I really should say for learners, these will be available via push notification. So to their mobile device and also via email. Manager notifications would be via email. And that's um, a kind of summary of what learners um, have courses in progress. So they've still yet to complete them and what courses are overdue for, for what learners so that they can really um, go and chase who they need to. Um, and finally, um, just in terms of proof of, of compliance, we're going to be adding the expiry dates to uh, the completion reports. Um, which hopefully should be sufficient for most of 
um, your you know, compliance auditing purposes. So you'd now have, as well as the, um, the date of completion, you'd get the date of expiry, but we're really keen to hear your feedback on this and um, if that you know, coincides with your needs. So um, give us a, a shout on that, keen to, to hear your thoughts. Awesome. Um, so that brings us to the end of the webinar. Um, any questions, feel free to pop them in the chat. Let me just see if we've answered everything. Have you seen any come through, Joyce? Oh, you're, you're on mute. We actually do have a few questions. Um, the first one is from Doug. Uh, can you set what dates people will see courses based around their enrollment times as well? Do forgive us if we don't immediately know the answer. We can definitely check with the product team to just really find out those little finicky details and then get back to you on that. Um, do you happen to know the, the answer to that one, Bri? I, yeah, I think that's something that we'll have to check with the, the product team on that. Um, yeah. Not, not too sure, yes, on that. Oakley doakley. Um, Christopher, so he, I think it's more feedback, which is great. Is this something, um, he's just referring to the PowerPoint conversion. He's just wondering whether we can include like image exporting um, within the PowerPoint conversion. Um, I guess the problem he's having is um, anything that isn't picked up in the way that we want to present it in the PowerPoint conversion usually requires us to manually export those images and then re-upload them. I definitely understand that pain point um, and that's definitely something that we can feed back to the product mm. team for a future iteration if possible. Yeah. Um, anyone so, else experiences that issue do let us know. Yeah and it's something that was heard on the um, the US version of this this webinar earlier today so um, yeah, good, good to hear that it's um, something that's um, across a few clients as well. So that will help us feed back to yeah, the product team. Yeah, awesome. Uh, Matt, he asked, can the expiry date function be used to automatically specify a time frame for completion where the course becomes unpublished, stop sending reminders after a certain period? Mm -hmm. Yeah, again, I think that's something that we, um, yeah, that we probably need to double check with the product team. Um, yeah. yeah. I think it will definitely stops uh, expire after a time frame. It's just whether the reminders will stop. I, I feel like it should, but we can definitely yeah. check. Yeah, I um, think. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And then with Adam, hey, Adam, uh, will you be providing a verification of competency assessment practical verification? That's the observations tool, if I'm guessing correctly, Adam, because I know we've chatted it up about this before. Uh, we will be providing that. Um, do you happen to know the timeline on that, Bri? Um, so I think it is Q2. Yeah, we didn't include that on um, on this version of the the webinar, but it is of course in the in the works and it's top um, top priority for for the for the new features list. Um, yeah, I do remember the last time I spoke with our head of product, he did update me and said uh, he said that we're building out the MVP, which is the minimum viable product at the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. And awesome. um, I've also had a question here on um, whether admins will be able to set specific reminder dates of their choosing rather than just the defined, you know, three days before due date or one day before the due date. Um, and it, for the for the first iteration anyway, it's likely to be a set duration of within seven days, but. Um, yeah, keen again to hear your your feedback and if there's you know large interest from from customers to have this as a as a custom reminder date, then um, let us know again on that. Yeah, I think usually the idea is we want to 
be able to provide you guys that functionality, but we don't want, you have to think too hard. So we try to make things as automated as possible. But if you do really want to manually Im uh, input those functions, let us know. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I think that was it for questions. Um, yeah, any, any others that you can see from your side, Joyce? Um, obviously, if you've got um, any specific feedback or any other questions that come up at all, um, reach out to Joyce and I to um, yeah feed feedback anything that that, that you want, and um, yeah we'll be we'll be delighted to hear that or mention it during your upcoming call with us. Um, we'll be touching base with you all soon. Um, and just another reminder as well that you've got access to our um, really friendly support team now, which has be which has grown. We've got a, a dedicated support function now. So if um, you need, if you ever need immediate support and can't, can't get a hold of Joyce and I, um, then feel free to email them. You can visit the support site as well or message them over live chat. Yeah, and um, I do want to say that as these features get released, I will definitely be updating the support site to include step by step guides, um, just explaining the new features as well. And um, it'll, it'll just be good for those people who prefer to follow along to a document rather than follow a video. Awesome. Thank you, Joyce. Um, so yeah, thanks everyone for, for joining again and um, really looking forward to seeing how these features can benefit your program this year. Thanks everyone. Have a great weekend ahead. Thanks guys. Happy Friday. Enjoy your weekend. <laughs> thanks Joyce. <laughs>